Hi, Jill here from Jilbert's Bits of Bites, and I'm here to show you the uh, latest action I have created, and it's called Age and Distress It. Um, this is one is for Photoshop Elements. Um, there will be a separate video for uh, the regular Photoshop folks. There are a few differences. I mean, you still get the effect, but some things worked in Photoshop that didn't work in Elements. And excuse me, I have a rather hoarse voice so here we go hopefully I won't stumble around here too much I'm not real familiar with <coughs> excuse me Photoshop elements anyway you've got instructions you can take you know start up here really easy it just kind of basically tells you what you're gonna do and what you can't do so let's get started and I'm gonna show you the first part here whoops uh, where you can colorize so this is here, right here, the colorize image. And this is for if you have an image that's full color and you want to make it look like a, you know, a sepia or aged one, this is what you use. So I start off, in other words, if you haven't got your image open, stop and open your image and hit continue. Now this is, we're going to colorize it. And one of the things I tell you, know, show you is I'm making a gradient map adjustment layer. And That's funny. I, things don't refresh the same way in Elements like they do in uh, Photoshop. So here, here you get this. You want to use the bar here. Um, if you have installed the gradients, I find that uh, Photoshop Elements is very good at cleaning them up and making them disappear on you. So you pretty much have to come back over here. So just hit Cancel it. Hit the Gradient tool. And come over in the toolbar. You see where this is in the little triangle. And this will be off the screen. I apologize. But what you want to do is bring up the preset manager. You can also get to that under the edit menu. And you can't see it very well, but there's the, the pick for preset manager. Um, you want to append, not add. If you add, you will only add the gradients and the rest of yours will go away. So here's the gradients. I supply you with five gradients in the action. Let me say done done. So now I come back over here and make the adjustment layer again because I canceled the other one. Make adjustment layer, gradient map. <coughs> and here are my gradients finally. So you pick on them and you can kind of preview which one looks best to you. These actually were made from color picks that I made from old photographs. So they're kind of official, yeah. So I hit that OK. And if you like what you see, just keep right on playing. If you want to change um, the gradient, see this gradient here, the gradient map, you can double click on that and the panel comes up, this gradient map. And again, you can change them. You can actually save this if you want to dock it. For example, I usually have it docked in with my actions. You can get to this one and it took me a while to trick. This is actually called an adjustments panel. And it, But when you're working with the gradient, you see gradient map in it. But anyway, that's where that is. So you could always change that. But I'm happy with what it is. Now I just want to save it. I'm going to have to do a bigger window. And save it as a JPEG. Now, one thing I do want to qualify on, on these things here is that this action is meant to be used with JPEGs. Um, you do it, and I don't think it would even work with pings and other image things. So, you, you know, this is for photos. Anyway, now we're going to age this photo. And this is very similar to the uh, blog post I did on this on the studio, Digital Scrapbooking Studios blog, um, with a little bit more, a little bit more you can do. Anyway, let's play this here. It says, get your, you know, get your image open. And one of the things I, I explained on there was I like my uh, PPI uh, pixels per inch to be the same as the overlay. So I'm changing this over to 300, which is what the overlay is, 300 PPI. When the dialog box comes up, you want to make sure it says 300. And make sure that this thing here next to the resample image, the little box, is not checked. And we're, just, we're not really making this any bigger, not making more dots. We're just trying to rearrange them a little. Anyway, so now when the place dialog comes up, you want to navigate over to your um, Dara type overlay. I've provided you actually that with four. You'll see, you find four of them with the action. Um, there's more of them available in my store, hint, hint. 
Um, so let's come over here and there, overlays. And let's pick, mm, let's say that one right there. Now when you bring it in, I say just go ahead and accept it. Um, and I give you the opportunity then to transform it. So you just hit continue. And it's mainly so I could explain. Not put, I don't like to put too much stuff into one of these stops. The thing is, is I wanted you to know that you do not have to maintain the pr original proportions of the overlay. Um, but you do want to try to... Uh, oh, geez, this is not helping me very much, is it? <laughs> Won't let me scroll out for some reason. You want to make sure that that goes beyond the bounds of the image so you don't end up in any hard edges. Oh, there we go. Now let me scroll. Um, but it can go be, you know, it can go way far. It doesn't be, have to be the same. Anyway, just accept it. Now I start doing my little magic. So now, as you can see, this doesn't quite look right. It's, you know, it's got all this... Um, mess. Anyway, what you're going to do is do a fill layer and to get that, you know, this this again, this is this is a fill layer kind of like you do an adjustment layer. And it comes up and you want a color, but even if it says color, click color again so you can pick a color from your image. So you want to go in, pick one here. Say okay. Okay. There. Now, if you want to change that background there, what I've done is I've given you an, another adjustment layer and it's hue saturation. You can play with it. And as you see, there's here now I have the thing that said before gradient map. Now it says hue saturation. And you can play with your sliders. You can make it darker. So you can make that background darker. You can change the hue. You can change it from different colors, you know. Um, I can make it really saturated. Yeah. Ugh, yuck. Anyway, um, or you can just set these all back to zero and you're right back to where you've started. Okay, and when you're done, continue playing. It flattens up your image and helps you save it out. Okay, that's kind of like all the image stuff that you do here for your photos to do it. Um, my friend, fellow designer Manu Scraps, Manu from Manu Scraps, is one of the people who tests my things and it's mainly because she knows how to take my actions and go way beyond. Um, sometimes she's broken it or just basically misunderstood me. Um, but she also, she does wonderful things. I mean she gave me the wonderful idea for one more thing to add to this action and that was to distress papers. And it isn't just like you do this image. This one's a little bit different. So let's close this one out. And let me bring in um, one of my papers. It was from, it's a retire kit called Fruit Salad Days. Anyway, so it's starting off kind of the same way. Now this particular action only works on 12 by 12 by 300 papers. It won't work on, on the others. I guess you might be able to warp it to where it works, but like my new does, but don't do it, please. <laughs> you only get frustrated. So now, you, once again, you want to go and go to the overlays, pick yourself an overlay, accept it, and you don't have to resize it because it's, you know, the right size because we're all working on 12 by 12 by 300. Okay, now as you can see in here, it's transparent or actually, well, it's kind of transparent. Anyway, um, we continue and what you want to do now is place another um, paper to be used behind it so it shows through. Then it looks like kind of like worn um, wallpaper. Uh, you can make a solid color if you want. You know, use one of your solids to do it. Let me see if I can figure out where I'm at here. Source files. I'm going to use one, also for, you know, one of the artsy ones that are also from my um, fruit salad days, and that's it. I can go and save it out, and as you can see, it's it's aged. You can make, you can even use this to make your overlays. You know, if you want to use it on something that's a plain color, um, you can desaturate it like a uh, command control 
shift U, that goes black into a black and white. See, now you've got your grayscale. And save it out, and or you can just do it here, make another layer. Um, hit your bucket tool, pick a color, oh, pick a nice bright pink, go over the top, and just tell it to color. Or you can overlay. It's kind of fun sit there and play with these things. But anyway, that's my latest action called Age and Distress It.